covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. Artist Simon Wecker noticed something unusual at a May Day demonstration in Berlin. Google Maps showed that there was a massive traffic jam, even though there were zero cars on the road. Soon enough, Wicket realized that it was the mass of people, or more specifically, their smartphones, that had inadvertently tricked Google into seeing gridlock on an empty street. And then he decided to do it himself. Wicker says, quote, The question was if it might be possible to generate something like this in a much simpler way. I don't need the people. I just need their smartphones, end quote. So he borrowed phones from friends and rental companies until he had acquired 99 devices, which he piled into a little red wagon. The plan was simple. Over the course of a day, Wecker would walk up and down a given street, mostly at random, towing his smartphone-packed wagon behind him. The effect wasn't instantaneous. It took Google Maps about an hour to catch up. But eventually, inevitably, Wecker said that his wagon would create a huge, long red line in the app, indicating that a traffic had slowed to a crawl, even though there wasn't any traffic at all. He had effectively tricked the system into thinking a series of large buses was crawling back and forth. Google said in a statement, quote, traffic data in Google Maps is refreshed continuously thanks to information from a variety of sources, including aggregated and anonymized data from people who have location services turned on and contributions from the Google Maps community, end quote. They note that while it had figured out how to distinguish between cars and motorcycles, it does not yet have any way to filter for a Weckert setup. Weckert says, quote, what I'm really interested in generally is the connection between technology and society and the impact of technology, how it shapes us, end quote. The hack is getting attention, not only because it's fun, but also serves as a necessary reminder that the systems people take for granted involve inputs and outputs, and that they themselves are sometimes both. It shows how simple it is to be, it, how simple it is to fool a product in which people place a tremendous amount of trust. That is interesting. That, that's a lot of fun. But I love how the artist has found the spin to say, hey, maybe we're trusting the technology a little too much that so much so that anyone looking at their app or using their GPS that's powered by Google services is avoiding those areas based on his little experiment. Right. So when when I had first heard the story, I thought to myself, okay, so four people are in a car. Like if you're carpooling and you're yeah. stuck in a slow section of the highway, mm-hmm. is it going to show up way busier on the highway than it actually that's, is? It's completely, it yeah. yeah. That's, that's, I, I, I personally use Waze, which is owned by Google. It, mm-hmm. It's, yeah, it's, I think it's the exact same. Well, no, there's some enhanced features that Google Maps it's doesn't spelled have. differently. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but what I like about Waze is is that it is user input, mm-hmm. unlike a lot of Google Maps that is drawn by anonymous uni- user data and things happening in the back end. Mm-hmm. So Waze builds off uh, Google Maps, but then you can add your individual um, mm-hmm. components into it. But I have at times had a phone call or a text or something come in where it's like, I need to respond to this. So I'll pull over on the side of the road, do the thing that I need to do. And all of a sudden I get an alert on my phone. We're detecting a slowdown. Oh, you know, yeah. are you in traffic? How heavy is the traffic? And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not. Busy. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm pulled over. And so I'll, I'll say no and move on. They're but like, I, this is, this is odd. Jeff is not texting while driving. <laughs> no, I this is out of character for you. I follow the rules. <laughs> but, um, what, uh, what I could have done is gone. Yes. Heavy traffic. Sure. Traffic's flowing yeah. beside me. But yeah. so, I mean, there is that user element. So I've never fully trusted the information I see. Mm-hmm. on those services because i know that there is that user input data right actually today on my way to the studio i always use google maps i even though i know how to get here i always use it i like i like to be told what to do um <laughs> <laughs> but google told me to take the highway and i looked at the highway and i thought ah, uh-uh, that's a dead stop and google was pretty mad at me like it kept trying uh-huh. to direct me back to the highway but i was like mm, i am taking the main road was it just that one spot and then it was fine after? I don't know. 
Yeah, there's one spot on the highway right now. Uh-huh. But okay, so this <laughs> this opens up something though interesting about, and I know we need to move to the next story, but about proximity. How specific is location-based services on the phone? Because like yeah. my kids play Pokemon Go. Yeah. So when they're at home, if they move from one side of the living room to the next, their character moves with them. Yeah. But when I'm sitting in the car, I'm getting a bigger blip on the map. And so I don't know if it can update as quick to my precise it, location. It's probably lulling you into a, a false sense of like anonymity. It knows exactly where you, it knows well, exactly where you're parked. So then <gasps> could Google have not built something into the programming that it watches for the collection of devices and it goes, there are 99 within this box. That's not actual. I think they will I now, I think they're Jeff. working on that in this present moment. So it, it is I don't something think they, they saw do. him coming. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. The wagon foiled us again. <laughs>